Welcome to the TOEFL Listening section. In this section, you will listen to an academic lecture and then answer questions about what you heard. You may take notes while you listen. You will have time to review your notes before answering the questions. Listen to part of a lecture in a university class. You will hear the lecture only once, so listen carefully. After the lecture, you will answer some questions about what you heard. Some questions ask about the main ideas and supporting details. Other questions ask you to make inferences or connections between ideas. Answer each question based on what is stated or implied in the lecture. Good morning, everyone. Today we will examine how short-term and long-term memory systems function and how those processes support learning. I want to begin by distinguishing short-term memory and working memory. Short-term memory refers to a temporary store for information that we can hold for a few seconds to a minute. Working memory is the active manipulation of that information to perform tasks like mental arithmetic or following multi-step instructions. Historically, researchers referred to a capacity of about seven plus or minus two items in short-term memory. More recent evidence suggests that when information is divided into meaningful chunks, the effective capacity can be greater or less, depending on complexity. For example, when you learn a phone number, you do not remember 10 digits one by one. You group them into chunks like area code, prefix, and line number. That chunking reduces cognitive load and makes retention in working memory more efficient. Maintenance of information in short-term memory depends on rehearsal. Rehearsal can be simple repetition or more elaborate rehearsal that links new material to existing knowledge. Rehearsal prolongs activation but does not by itself guarantee transfer to long-term memory. Transfer to long-term memory depends on encoding and consolidation. Encoding means transforming incoming information into a format that the brain can store. Deep encoding strategies such as elaboration, organization, and creating meaningful associations improve the likelihood of long-term retention. There are two broad types of long-term memory that matter for learning. Declarative memory stores facts and events. Procedural memory stores skills and habits. Declarative memory is available to conscious recall. Procedural memory is expressed in performance and often resists verbal description. Consider a case study. A student learns the theory behind riding a bicycle and can describe the balance and forces involved. That knowledge is declarative. After repeated practice, the ability to ride becomes procedural. The skill can persist even when the student cannot explain the motor adjustments they make. At the neural level, consolidation involves multiple processes. Synaptic consolidation alters the strength of connections between neurons and can occur within hours after learning. Systems consolidation is a slower process in which memory traces become reorganized across different brain regions, and that can unfold over weeks or years. Sleep plays a crucial role in consolidation. Research shows that slow-wave sleep supports the reactivation of newly encoded memories and promotes their integration into existing networks. In practical terms, studying followed by sufficient sleep often yields better long-term retention than late-night cramming without sleep. Another important phenomenon is the spacing effect. Distributed study sessions spaced over time produce stronger long-term memory than a single extended session. Spacing allows for repeated encoding and reconsolidation, which strengthens memory traces. Active retrieval practice is also powerful. Testing yourself forces retrieval, which strengthens memory more than passive review. In many experiments, participants who engaged in retrieval practice retained information better over weeks and months. When designing instruction, we should therefore combine several elements. 
Use chunking to manage working memory load. Encourage deep encoding through elaboration and organization. Promote space practice and include low-stakes quizzes to harness retrieval practice. Finally, consider sleep and rest as biological supports for consolidation. Before I finish, I want to emphasize one more clinical example. Patients with damage to medial temporal structures often show impaired declarative memory while retaining procedural skills. This dissociation provides strong evidence that different memory systems rely on distinct neural circuits. To summarize, short-term and working memory handle active processing and temporary storage. Long-term memory involves declarative and procedural systems and depends on encoding and consolidation processes that operate on different timescales. Use rehearsal wisely, space your study sessions, practice retrieval, and respect sleep. That concludes the lecture. Are there any questions about how these processes interact to support learning? Listen again to part of the lecture. Then answer the question. Synaptic consolidation alters the strength of connections between neurons and can occur within hours after learning. Systems consolidation is a slower process in which memory traces become reorganized across different brain regions, and that can unfold over weeks or years. This concludes the listening section. For more TOEFL practice tests and study materials, visit spinta.org.